Hello guys and welcome back. Today's video is a little bit different because your girl did a seven day challenge and that challenge was all to do with fasted cardio. I wanted to give it a go, I didn't want to just write it off completely and give fasted cardio a good old try to see kind of what happened to me and whether or not I truly enjoyed it or I'll just remain a cardi no girl for the rest of my life. But before we get into this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down however you're feeling and hit that bell notification on. Right, let's get into this video. Now I deal with a lot of clients on a daily basis and one of the key questions I get is whether fasted cardio is better than fed cardio. Now honestly, if I'm being completely and truly honest, I'm gonna keep this video simple, understandable, and easy to digest. And what I mean by that is I'm not gonna throw a bunch of studies your way, although I've done so much research on this, I'm gonna link Jeff Nippard's video in the description box. I absolutely adore Jeff's work, he puts so much effort into his work, so much research. So if you want a more science-based approach on fast cardio, be sure to look at that video and be sure to also give him some support. Now, when it comes to any type of fat loss, one thing you must remember is nutrition is key. You need to be in a caloric deficit. And essentially that means your output should be greater than your input. So you're constantly on a deficit. Nutrition is key. So if you're constantly in a surplus and expected to lose weight, trim down, cut, whatever you wanna call it, it's just not gonna suffice. So you really need to be watching kind of what you're eating and your input into your body and what your expenditure is as well. When it also comes to losing weight, majority of my clients assume that an abundance amount of cardio is what you need to be doing. So by that I mean hours on end, on the treadmill, no resistance training, weight training, um, any type of other training but cardio. It works wonders for some people, especially if you're training for a marathon run or any type of endurance training. However, if you are looking to lose weight as well as sculpt your body, build a physique, resistance and weight training is key. It's a key component. So stop being so afraid of the weights and so reliant on cardio to give you the results that you wanna be seeing. You wanna mesh the two together to see optimum results. Now, that's just my personal preference. I'm being a little biased, I know. But for me, body weight training, weight training, resistance, and an incorporation of slight cardio is what has transformed my body and has transformed thousands of other clients that I work with. Now, let's see what happened in day one. <laughs> Okay, all done as you can see. Honestly, I'm like sweating. But 25 minutes, that's not bad. First day, feeling good. It wasn't so bad, honestly. I just put in a video and I was watching it and I just got distracted. I wasn't really thinking about the numbers. A good thing to do as well is get your t-shirt and hide the timer because then it distracts you and it makes you feel like oh I've got a while to go but if you hide the timer then you're not focusing on the time so much and then uh, just find something that you're interested in watching whether that be a YouTube video, a documentary, whatever, just keep yourself occupied. As you could see day one was kind of a breeze. I woke up incredibly early, I was motivated, I had set myself a challenge to wake up early get the cardio done. It was fairly easy, if I'm being honest, just because I got on the Stairmaster and was kind of doing my own thing. I was watching a YouTube video and I got distracted. Now, when we're talking about fasted cardio, I was also doing very steady state, nothing intense. I wasn't doing any hit 
HIIT is high intensity interval training. It requires a lot of power, a lot of energy, and if I'm being honest, to do that first thing in the morning when I'm not fed, it was just a little bit too much. And you could end up being a little bit dizzy, a little bit lightheaded, so that's something you definitely want to avoid. So steady state for about 25 to 30 minutes served me well, and that's what people tend to opt for. It's a little bit more easy going on the body, and you're obviously burning your cows as you're doing the cardio. So I've got in here some branch chain amino acids, the women's best ones, and these just help your muscles recover and for them not to completely deplete and break down, blah, blah, blah. I'll go into it a little bit more. If you want me to, comment down below. I can do a whole video on why I take supplements, what supplements I take, and more. So I'm gonna head over to the gym. I'm gonna get down about 25 to 30 minutes worth of cardio. I'm really enjoying it lately because it's given me a sense of motivation and fulfillment for getting it done. So I'm waking up in the morning, putting my gym clothes on, grabbing my water and BCAs, running out the door and getting it done. And I feel so, that's Button's footsteps. I feel just so good about it. It's given me such good endorphins. So yeah, let's go get, get our sweat on. Now, when we got to day two, I switched it up. As you guys saw, I went on the treadmill. The reason being my knees were hurting a little bit on the Stairmaster, especially because I'm currently on Roaccutin, and Roaccutin is for acne-prone skin. Um, it kind of dries out your, your joints, your back, your bones. Uh, it essentially kind of strips away the vitamin A of your body. So my knees were feeling a little bit rusty. <laughs> so after for the treadmill, incline at 50% and then I was speed 4, 4.5, so very, very steady state. I did 30 minutes cardio, yet again, watched the video, got some emails done, and it was amazing. I did this for the following two days. Day three done. So instead of Stairmaster, what we did was we did an incline walk for about 30 minutes. Um, incline 15%, so it was a full incline. And then I did 30 minutes at speed four. So as soon as I finish my workout, I have some protein here. This is Fitway by Women's Best. And the reason why I'm having protein straight after, I've, if I'm having my protein, that means I've essentially broken my fast. And the reason being is because when you tend to do any type of cardio, there lies a small risk or a big risk. It truly depends. There lies a risk on you depleting your muscles. And there's a reason why anyone that wants to build muscle is they're in a caloric surplus and they do minimal amount of cardio. And when you're in a caloric deficit, what is tend to be recommended is you increase your cardio or you increase your NEAT. Now, obviously, for for me, my fundamental goal with the 60 day challenge that I'm doing is to shred up a bit more, to push myself, to increase my endurance, my power, my strength, everything. It is not to build muscle. I am not doing a surplus. I am not doing this to build muscle. And I'm also incorporating fasted cardio to see how my body responds. So hence why I'm doing this seven day challenge. Now, I, with that being said, I still wanna maintain the muscle that I've grown before and make sure that I'm hitting my macros, so especially my protein macros. So by having a shake, it's a convenient way to get in your protein. I do recommend not relying solely on shakes and solely on supplements. You need a good nutritional wholesome diet with the right amount of macros to obviously help you target your goals. You cannot just rely on shakes and supplements. They are there to supplement the diet you already have. So that's why I'm having a quick shake, 23 grams of protein, which is great. I'm gonna go home, have a full breakfast, high protein, carbs as well, fats as well. Remember, I'm not removing or restricting myself from any type of food group. I just wanna put it out there. So shake to help my muscles not deplete, to help my muscles maintain. So, mm. okay.
when we got to day four, it went a little bit downhill. The reason being is because I actually slept an hour later than I, what I was used to. So that means by sleeping an hour later, I struggled to wake up the usual time of seven o'clock. So I woke up a little bit later, meaning my cardio session was delayed, meaning me getting fed was delayed. As you know, the first meal of the day, people refer to as breakfast, but it, it stands for you breaking your fast. So me breaking my fast was then prolonged because I went to the gym a little bit later than usual. And that meant doing that cardio on day four was much more tricky than I thought it would be because my mind was more occupied in actually feeding myself than doing this cardio, but you know. and seven was an absolute breeze. I managed to get back into my routine and you know what, I was truly, at this point, getting so used to waking up, going to the gym and smashing a fasted cardio that it almost becomes second nature and I kind of wanted to do it. Now I tried fasted cardio because one, I wanted to see what the hype was about really. Two, I wanted to see if I was able to do it. Three, whether I would actually enjoy it. And four, I didn't want to write it off. A lot of people have very strong opinions when it comes to training. Some really, really do not promote any type of fasted training and others think that fasted cardio is the best approach when it comes to fat loss. But when you actually sit down and read what true studies say and read what professional academics say, it seems like two decades ago, fasted cardio was the best type of cardio you could opt for to burn fat. But if you look at studies now, it actually says that it's actually, it doesn't matter whether you're fasted or fed. It's truly down to preference and either way, you are gonna burn some sort of fat. In my personal opinion, I have always been such an advocate for avoiding any type of training fasted. I still am an advocate when it comes to weight training and fasted. I strongly believe that you need to have some sort of fuel in your system in order to train properly and to train sufficiently. And especially if you're doing a heavy leg day, let's say, and you haven't fed your body for a very, very long time, you might get a little bit dizzy, a little bit sick. So you definitely wanna avoid that. However, when it comes to fasted cardio, I found myself thoroughly enjoying it. It didn't feel strenuous, it didn't feel grueling, and it was definitely very energizing, I would say, because I got something done in the morning, I felt proud of myself, and it avoided me from doing cardio later on in the evening after my weight sessions. Now, with that being said, if you are doubling up on your training sessions, for example, doing faster cardio in the morning, and the weights in the evening, it could be a little bit too much. So I would strongly recommend if you're someone who works at nine to five and then it comes to 5 p.m. and you're incredibly exhausted, tired, and the last thing you wanna be doing is cardio, get it done in the morning. If you incorporate faster cardio maybe three times a week, it's such a great way to just get your cardio done, burn some extra cows, and feel proud of yourself. However, if you're someone who does not like even the idea, the concept of cardio, and let alone doing it for half an hour on a treadmill, which was me, HIT is a great alternative. High intensity interval training is what I've been doing for the past four years of my life. I do it right after a resistance and weight training session. I have this mass amount of endorphins running through my system. You're using so much power, so much energy, and also it's effective, it's quick, and you're burning quite a lot of calories. So there's alternatives for everyone. You don't have to do less and you don't have to do hit. It's completely down to preference. Either one is just as amazing. I hope you liked watching this video and I didn't wanna just write off something because, you know, society tells you otherwise. Give something a go, see whether it fits your schedule, your routine, or whether you truly enjoy it. Will I continue to do fasted cardio? Is that the question? Yes, I will. I wanna to continue to do it maybe two to three times a week, 
just because truly it makes me feel super energized. Will I continue to do hit? Mm, maybe. But you know what? You live and you learn, you grow and you evolve and your preferences change. So give it a go. Anyway, make sure that you are subscribed to this channel and following your girl on Instagram. Comment down below what you thought of this video and if you want me to do another seven day challenge. Be sure to check Jeff Nippard's video out. The guy works overtime on his content. He literally is one of the very few people um, that I truly, truly enjoy watching on YouTube. Him and Stephanie Buttermore. So um, yeah, make sure you check both of them out. I love you always and forever. Bye. And also be sure to stay tuned for episode five of my 60 day challenge.